Welcome everyone, I'm Doug Hazelman, VP of Product Strategy with Veeam. I also have with me Luca Deloca, as well as Rick Vanover, aka Rickatron. Uh, we're from Veeam, uh, excited to present again to Tech Field Day Extra, so we're looking forward to feedback. Please ask questions, don't feel afraid. Uh, we're gonna go through a couple of technologies today, uh, some cool stuff, and we wanna, you know, again, feel free to ask questions. Two of the things I'm excited about in Veeam Backup and Replication version 8, which is part of the Veeam Availability Suite version 8, is Backup I.O. Control and Snapshot Hunter. Uh, these are, are two technologies that go, you know, kind of very deep in terms of VMware, um, specifically for Snapshot Hunter. Backup I.O. Control is both vSphere as well as Hyper-V. Um, and then we'll also talk about the product that we announced last week, Veeam Endpoint Backup Free. So, love to get your opinions and thoughts on that as well. But first off, I'm going to hand it over to Luca, okay. and he's going to talk about the uh, first couple of things here. Okay. Take Thanks, Doug. And again, welcome also from me. Uh, I'm Luca De Loca, EMEA Evangelist at Veeam. And we're going to talk today about backup of your control. Uh, backup of your control is a new feature coming in version 8, but instead of thinking about it as a new isolated feature, we would like to highlight the history of what we call the automatic intelligent load balancing that has started few uh, versions ago. We started with version 6, uh, creating a new distributed architecture by having multiple proxies, which are our own data mover, to extend the capability and the power of the backup activity that we can do, so you can load balance the backup activities between multiple data mover, spread the load among, among them, and if you want to reach high backup speed, increase the speed by adding more and more proxies. Then in version 7, we added parallel processing. So the unit of the backup activities is no more the single job, but you can go down to the single virtual disk of any VM with parallel processing. So the same job can be distributed among all the available proxies. The, a virtual machine with multiple VM decay can be distributed among multiple proxies. So the intelligent balancing can use, distribute multiple jobs running at the same time into multiple proxies based on uh, characteristics like direct sign connection that maybe some proxy has and some proxy doesn't, uh, based on the load that is already running on a proxy. So a new job coming into the queue can be run on a less loaded proxy. But then we started thinking of an, a new and additional feature to improve even more this load balancing technique that we have. And one of the idea uh, that came for backup of your control is the fact that when you run a backup activity against the production storage, you are in, some, in a way impacting the performances of the production storage. Especially right now that we're talking about the always on business, uh, shortening RPO times needed by the company, so you need to run backup even more often, which means basically during production hour. And even if it's not a production hour, there is always some other activity that can run at the same time when the backup are running. So we try to design backup IO control exactly for this reason, to give you control of the IO. Uh, we found out there are two main categories of people dealing with this problem. Some of the admins usually doesn't care about this. They simply run the backup at the time that is needed to, and if there is an impact on the production, they simply go out and say, yeah, we know, we are running the backup, so sorry, everything is going slower. <laughs> uh, but as we say, uh, they don't care usually until some other users start to complain about these performances. And also, if you think about all the uh, automatic balancing we have in the jobs, you can already with version seven try to limit the load created with the backup by configuring the proxy with what we call uh, slots, so the maximum amount of VM that any proxy can process at the same time, and also the ingestion rate of the repository, which is the target where we save the backup. But even with this careful planning, there are also some unexpected activity that can always happen in the production storage. Think, for example, uh, a DBA that is want to run a maintenance plan on a SQL, in the same time when the backup is running, because 
we both want to use the night for running these kind of activities. And then we need to find a way to use the limited amount of I.O. both for the production and for the backup activities. OK, because obviously this is going to impact both the availability of the production storage and also the performances that you can have. Uh, this is what backup your control is about. It's patent pending, so. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sorry, patent pending. Yeah. <laughs> Doug is the patent pending guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, backup your control now takes into consideration all the previous parameters coming from the previous feature that we have, and also the data store latency that the backup is coming from. So we constantly measure the latency of the data store where we are, or the volume, if it's an Hyper-V, where we are pulling the backup from, and you can configure thresholds. So basically, whenever latency goes above the threshold, we start slowing down uh, all the backup activities. In fact, the internal name of the project was Project Slowdown. Uh, aren't, you, <coughs> yeah. aren't you adding part of the problem there for the, the time that your delta is open on an on an active database, because the the, the issue with the issue with a, with a data with database I/O is that it's the time that you're doing a backup, it's increasing the delta size, and you will not be able to commit it. right to commit it afterwards. Aren't you increasing that time here? Um, it's it's definitely it, there, there's a, there's always you know when you think about performance, there's always a trade-off, right? So mm -hmm. um, now obviously, if you use storage snapshots, you don't have to worry about this, but um, it, you know in terms of you know, the backup taking longer, then the snapshot will be open longer, and then you will have a longer commit. So that's that's essentially a trade-off. But from a production from a production perspective, right? We don't want you know necessarily the the backup to be blamed uh, for for some of these production hits. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing too is you know as Luca Luca pointed out, there, there's actually two different settings that you can set. One says before the job starts, check the latency, and don't yeah. start the job if the latency is high. And the other is, while the job is running, if the latency goes yeah, above, above the threshold, that's when we yeah. slow down. So if, there, if there's already a lot of I.O. on the data store, mm -hmm. we'll wait for that to go down before we start the backup job. So it won't affect the snapshot yeah. in, in that uh, area. We have a feature, uh, yeah. screenshot of this. Uh, as usual, also, we try to keep all the complexity on the back end of the software. And the final result for the user is a simple checkbox. You enable it, and you have two ways of enabling it, uh, depending on the version that you have. On the enterprise edition, you're going to have a general setting. So these two thresholds are going then to explain what the, the meaning. Uh, as Doug said, the first level is don't add additional job to the running one if the latency has overcome, uh, gone over the threshold. But then obviously you also have the problem of the already running jobs that are creating uh, uh, latency. So the second level, the second threshold kicks in by slowing down the already running jobs. And just a quick question: yeah. Will you will the system do any kind of baselining? Because I know some people will go pick a number: twenty milliseconds, thirty milliseconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are the two default value we have with twenty and thirty okay. for the two threshold? Then you can change the value. Yeah. But, there, but, there's, but there's no baselining to say that from my existing backup jobs, give me a threshold that my data store responds habitually. Mm -hmm. During the backup jobs in the round in the range of thirty, for example, uh, not in the software. You can use, for example, our, our other software, Vim One, yeah. and collecting history information from the latency of the data source during the time of the backup, and so checking usually what the latency can be. Okay, so but, the, but the admin the, has to educate himself a bit and has to know his system. Well, it, it, you have to know the system, but the but the, the idea here is it's it's dynamic, yes. right? So yeah. you know what, what we try to do is is set some industry standard. You know. It, Typically, warnings go into effect when you go above 20, 20 milliseconds, right? right? So that's that's what we set, kind of, you know, for the for the industry standard baseline. Now, if you have really slow storage, right, then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to adjust up. that up. Um, okay. <laughs> there's nothing we, there's nothing <laughs> you're we never gonna run a backup. That's but, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, at, le at least the primary job of any backup is going to run anyway. Yeah. We have a safeguard in place. Otherwise, exactly on an extremely slow storage, if you want to use this feature, the backup is never going to end or never going to start. I'm thinking more in situations where I've got a RAID rebuild in the background going on, for example. Mm -hmm. It's going to severely impact latency, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's going to take all night, which means I'd have like one window lost uh, potentially. Can, mm -hmm. can you get a warning 
that the backup job did not run or how, how do you protect that from like backup window time? Because it's, it's, it's our waiting. Own, from our own Yeah, if I, if I set thresholds here, yep. there's a certain point that I don't care that much anymore about latency because I want to have the backup. Is oh, there you a, is there, is okay, there you cannot override it in real time. No, I, no, I want I want to override it in uh, automatically. Like I care about my latency, but I do care more more about my SLA at a certain point. Yeah. We're still going to we're still going to complete the backup at mm -hmm. some point. We're just going to complete it slower than normal. Mm -hmm. Well, no, sometimes you're you're just not going to start the backup. We will wait it's not later. Mhm. Mm We'll, we'll it's just, going to start later. Yep. It'll, it'll just start later. We'll, we're, we're, we'll still attempt. We'll make uh, every attempt to. By the way, that our automatic balance of the job works, at the time that the job is scheduled to start, the job is anyway placed in the running queue, as always. And it will stay there until. It will stay there at 0% completion until there is enough resources based, again, on free proxies, uh, enough slot, and now also enough latency to get actively started. So even uh, after the backup window, it will start? No. Uh, if you have set up the backup window... You just have a failure. Like if you just there, have a failure, like, like you would have the if, there, yeah. if there's okay. not enough proxies available, you would have the same yes. failure. Okay. Uh, the, the backup window still have a higher priority than everything of this, because the reason behind this is that if you have set up a backup window, is because you want the job to stop yeah. whatever at that time. Because the, otherwise you're going to jump into production hour and everything. So we're going to stop the job anyway. Okay. The, the, other, the other thing to remember is the reason we instituted this feature was not because everyone has this problem. It's because a small percentage of people have this problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not going to be enabled by default. Yeah. Um, so this, this, is, is, this is an advanced feature. This is more yeah. of an advanced feature so that you know, if you have it on full automatic and you've got a very distributed architecture and you're really concerned about impacting production, you want to set this yeah. Um, yeah. because that way you know you'll you'll make sure not to impact production and you don't have to think about it right. right it's like okay i set it i don't have to go and rebalance my infrastructure every month because it's all changed mm. you just set this and and go and, and, and let it complete yeah. how do but, you measure the the latency do you measure on the original data store or if you are uh, using snapshot uh, are you measure on the uh, okay there are two ways of measuring the latency on VMware, it's easier because we simply pull data from vCenter. So it's the same stat statistics that you collect when you look at the performance graph in vCenter, which is, by, by the way, the reason why our statistics are collected every 20 seconds, because it's the same exact timing on vCenter. Hyper-V doesn't have this, fe this native feature, so we cre created some software by ourselves to pull the same kind of information from Hyper-V. But the, the final result is the same, both for vSphere and Hyper-V. Can you say thank you to R&D to make it granularity on data store level? Yes. This is great. <laughs> okay, yeah, this, again, yeah, this is the difference. If you go for the enterprise version, there is a one general setting. Mm -hmm. If you go to the enterprise yeah. edition, plus. Pl plus, sorry, yeah, uh, you can go to set override values for every single data store. So for example, what you were saying before, if I want to have a backup that can complete no matter what, I can select that data store and disable the, the IO control for that data store. So in that case, the backup is going to run even if the latency is going to increase. And in this example, not all data stores are shown. So it's only the ones I care about. Yep. Do you want to see it real quick, the other half of it? Is that next, Luke? Yep. Yeah. Let's take a quick look at it. We'll hit next slide, just to make sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. This is uh, how it's going to work. This is a vCenter graph. So you need to look at the green lines, which is the read latency. Obviously, running backup, we care about the read I.O. latency, not the write I.O. And you see there, uh, when the backup I.O. control kicks in, immediately the read I.O. latency goes below the 20 milliseconds that we have as a threshold. And as soon as it is disabled, then obviously, in this case, the reader you latency start growing again. Here's the important part. So, like we had over here, when we have these options for the latency, uh, the, the, the one I care about, for example, is this 445 one. And for this example, I want to 
make a ridiculously um, low number, okay? Um, just, just for the sake of example. So I've, I've cranked this one down quite low to five milliseconds, but the, the generic setting is higher, but the one for this example I care about is much lower. So what I can do here is when I take this, uh, this backup job, which will have VMs on it, and while it's starting, I want to go see the previous interaction because there's some interpretive messaging that comes in here depending on its performance. And let me see if I can find it. Uh, there's this notion when, you know, you watch data move. Uh, in this example, uh, this didn't have any issues. But sometimes you'll see a message. We have this new handle called throttled or uh, waiting, right? And, and that's only when that's kicked in. So these previous examples were actually in pretty good shape, so they didn't have any kicked in. I'm looking for um, the word throttled, but I haven't seen it yet. It would pop in on the, on the large disk. It doesn't matter on the small files. But as we've started this real-time job here, so let's take a look. We're going to see uh, some things pop in here. But basically, uh, that setting is dynamic. It, it, and the best part is it's easy. I, uh, you know, the algorithm for how it implements, like Luke explained, is, is quite a lot of work. But, too. And it's patent pending. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. Let's see what we get. Uh, we have to call home to vCenter here. Ah, there we go. Waiting for availability. I don't know. It just popped in here. There we go. So right here, we're, we're holding. Okay, that's for one uh, of these tasks because uh, we're not ready in terms of a latency. But let's see how we go. Uh, there's no other backup jobs running. And it's not like it's uh, uh, that message waiting for infrastructure availability can be used there. I'm going to jump over here and just double check because I have some I have some courage here because this is actually what's running over across the street, the stand. We have ten other things going on at once. I have some, I have some courage here, um, but here we go. But this is the only backup. They're actually doing like eight restores at once over there because there's eight. Uh, here we go. Let's take a look at this one. So it's not going to start because it's not available, right? Well, no. Those are, uh, it'll, it'll start moving, but it's not, or it's going to prepare the job, but it's not actually going to read, I believe, is my expectation on test 02 and then test 02 clone. All of these 02s will, uh, there we go. That's Primary what I'm looking for. And, th and actually, now, there's a lot of things going on at once with the parallel processing, but the part I like here is it's been sitting there for a minute. I'm jumping around look at a lot of, looking at a lot of different things, but it's sitting there waiting for a minute. So that's the part that matters. And now this one is interesting because uh, the primary storage was above limit here, but all of these are not on the same data store. So that one is on the, uh, uh, on the, on the tin tree, and this one is, is definitely hitting the rules as they apply to the data store. This actually might be aligned on different data stores, that particular one, so that might be... Uh, why that's going on. But that's what I'm looking for, primary latency. And there's also um, a second half of this about when we're done. And, and I don't know if we want to stay until that point, but we won't actually, you know, depending on how we move data, part of the patent pending approach of backup IO control, we'll actually say, you know what, the data store is too busy to remove a snapshot. So we might hold off a little bit. So it's very interpretive. Okay, so there's a lot of yeah, knowledge points. points. Yeah, and a lot of knowledge points around there. So that's the bit that matters right there on backup I.O. control. Uh, and maybe when we jump in the next bit, I'll just jump in and we'll look at the log because that's honestly um, kind of the more interesting part of that. How do you check that the latency is not generated by Bing? Because if you take a copy of the mm -hmm. data store, the latency increases. So yeah. how do yeah, you different? We are, we are part of the problem of creating the I.O. latency, but yeah. uh, what we can control is not the read I.O. created by the VM, so we can remove the part of the I.O. created by ourselves. By, exactly, by throttling the job, we can stop basically creating additional read I.O. on the data store, so the data store is going to go in lower in latency. Obviously, if the latency cannot be go below the threshold, even without us, it means that there is some uh, issues in the data store, not for the, because of the backup, but because of the computer, something that is running on the data store. So at that time, you need to check again your thresholds, or if there are insane numbers, it's probably something that is happening in production. Yep. Okay.
and, and think of it as a speed limit as well, right? So, yeah. you know, you set the milliseconds. We're going to go as fast as we possibly can until we hit that ceiling, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll slow down back. so that, we, you know, we'll, we'll stay at that speed limit. But like you said, we're controlling it so we know. Um, you can have a notification when you, you are uh, throttling. Uh, uh, one of the li uh, multiple line of the job report is going to say uh, the throttling has happened. Right. Plus, with our, with our visibility solution through Veeam 1, um, you can get information, full, day, full reports in terms of your, you know, your backup statistics and information on, on when that kicks in. And it's all three phases, before it starts, while mm -hmm. it's going, and then it, yeah. while it's cleaning up. Yeah. Yeah. And what's also interesting in the, in the demo, uh, you have seen the interaction between, the, for example, the parallel process and the backup of your control. Uh, when Doug was explaining, we don't start additional job when we are above the threshold, even the same job have different virtual machine. The first three were started, but then because of the first three machine, we already went over the threshold. So the, the fourth machine was the third, but okay, it was in pending state. So the granularity is at the job level, but also at the VM level. Those jobs that have already started keep running, even though you've peaked yeah, above yes. the latency. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. They're throttling them down. 